hello there. I'm going to do an indirect method cash flow question. So here you can see in this question, I've got a balance sheet. I've uh, got my liabilities and equity there. I've got some additional information. And then I'm going to prepare what we call a reconciliation note, otherwise known as the indirect method of cash flows. So we're going to convert our net profit into cash flows from operating activities. So in order to do this, we need to adjust for two components. They're going to be our permanent differences. And our timing differences. So both of these help us to explain why our net profit after tax is different from cash flows in operating activities. So let's go through this question to solve for cash flows from operating activities. And we're going to start off our net profit after tax as the first line in our indirect method. Usually we would have an income statement in a question, but this question in particular says that there was a computer system crash and the income statement, some, some of that information and the cash flow statement was destroyed and the IT office was uh, able to recover the following information. So we've got operating profit after tax 221, that's actually equal to our net profit after tax. So we can use that information as the first line in our indirect method. So let's go and set up, here's our reconciliation note. Uh, everything's going to be in thousands. So we put in net profit after tax and it's going to be for 221. Now we're going to do our permanent differences. So these are going to involve things like depreciation and gains and losses on the sale of non-current assets. So let's go and have a look um, back in our information. Now, does it tell us uh, how much depreciation there was for the period? No. Uh, we do have the balance sheet information. We have some extra information down here about some equipment that was sold. So basically, we're going to have to reconstruct the T accounts for our depreciation. Uh, does it say uh, anything about any gains or losses? No, but it does have. I notice here that there's some proceeds from uh, disposal of equipment. And given we've got the cost, we've got accumulated depreciation, we can solve for if there's been any gain or loss on that uh, disposal of equipment. So we can go to our balance sheet. And we're going to use uh, accumulated depreciation buildings and accumulated uh, depreciation equipment T accounts. We could do what uh, I call the shortcut method if for a particular uh, non current asset there's been no sales or no revaluations. And why do I say no sales, no revaluations? Because both of those result in a write down in accumulated depreciation. So what I need to do is to uh, just check and I can even just have a look. Okay, buildings. So that's gone up 350 up to 460. That balances up. Uh, so it's not necessarily obvious there's been any sale. Uh, equipment. Uh, the balance has gone down. So that's definitely some evidence of potentially a sale or potentially a downwards revaluation. And then when I look to the additional information here, I can confirm that there's some equipment with the original cost of being sold. There's no information about the buildings being revalued. So I could, for the buildings, do the shortcut method. My shortcut method is that closing balance 193 minus the opening balance of 170. 
So it gives me 23 as the depreciation expense. So that's one way of estimating. But what about accumulated, accumulated depreciation on equipment? Can I do the same thing? No, because I know there's been a sale. Sales, they result in the write down of that accumulated depreciation. So I need to go and reconstruct the T accounts. Uh, I need to do the one definitely for equipment, but how about we'll just do the accumulated depreciation on buildings account. And so from the balance sheet, opening balance 170, closing balance 193. So uh, debit size 193 should be equal to our credit side 193. So the missing amount here is going to be 23 depreciation expense, which is was the 193 minus the 170. So equipment, I need to reconstruct this because of the sale of some equipment during the period. So from my balance sheet, opening balance 148, closing balance 144. So I had a write down during the period, so that's for the sale that's going to come in on the debit side. So let's track back. Let's have a look. Uh, what information do we have? So we had original costs 65, accumulation depreciation 45. So I can go and straight away pop in here 45. And that's the, uh, that's the actual write-off. To the, to the equipment because of the sale. So I'll put in brackets here, sale 45. So I'll total up the debit side 144 plus the sale 45. That's going to come to 189. It's equal to 189 on the credit side. So I can solve for that depreciation expense for the period. So 189 minus 148 gives me 41 depreciation expense. So while I'm here, I might as well do, or also, well I can add those two. So what's my total depreciation expense for the period? So 23 from the buildings, plus 41, the depreciation expense from equipment, so it's 64 total. So that's one of my permanent differences. Uh, so over here, I can do my journal entry for the sale. So the sale of equipment, I would have debited. For the sale of equipment, I would have debited cash. I, and uh, I'm, given, I'm given in that question the amount. So let's go back, have a look. So because it said process and disposal of equipment 63. So 63. Then I can put in the write down for the accumulated depreciation. That's 45 from the information in the question. I usually my style is I'll leave a line if there's a gain or a loss because I don't know what that is. I'm going to credit the equipment for its original cost, which was given to me in that extra information at 65. So now I need to solve so 65 as a, is my credit. Um, and if I minus that from 63 for the cash and 45 for the accumulated depreciation, uh, I'm left with a difference of 43 and I need to put that 43 as a credit to balance it out so that my debit to equals a credit. So if it's a credit, it's going to be a gain on sale and that's another permanent difference I need to adjust for because uh, gains and, and losses on the sale of non-current assets are really just this sort of balancing item in the journal entry it just helps my debits and credits to be equal. It's not equal to cash. And also the indirect method is only trying to uh, calculate the 
operating cash flows. And this sort of information, in particular the 63, that's going to go to investing activities. So I'm going to take these two permanent differences, the gain on sale, and I'm going to take my total depreciation and adjust both. So here I'm going to have my permanent differences. And I'm going to put in, I'm going to add back the depreciation expense. Because remember that depreciation was previously subtracted from the net profit after tax. So I want to reverse it, so I add it back. Uh, and then I'm going to adjust for the gain on sale of equipment. And so gains were originally added into net profit. So I subtract to remove them. I'm going to put brackets around to show it's negative, sit and subtract. I'm just going to do then a subtotal 221 net profit after tax minus 64, no sorry, plus 64 minus 43 gives me 244. So I want to continue on in my reconciliation note and so I'm going to continue uh, and, and I, this will continue on to a new page. So I'm going to have my timing differences. And so where am I going to find my timing differences? I'm going to find them from the balance sheet. So, and we have this shortcut rule, which I call click clad. So it stands for current liability increasing, then you add, current asset decreasing, then you add. So if you see the opposite, you're going to subtract. This is just a shortcut to help work out how to remove the non-cash amount from net profit after tax. So what can we use ClickCloud on? Well, all of the current assets except not cash. So I'm going to use all of these. Uh, why don't I use cash? Because the whole cash flow statement sends in between the opening and closing balances here of cash. I'm not going to use any of the non-current assets because they belong to the investing activities section of our cash flow statement. So here we've got my uh, current liabilities. I'm going to use all of these. So there's no short term loan and no dividends payable because those two items belong to financing activities. So I'm going to use all of these current liabilities. The non-current liabilities and equity, that's what would help me with the financing activities if I was doing a full cash flow statement. Um, just doing the indirect method, so I just want to use those current liabilities and the current assets. So I'm going to use my click clad, work out what are the amounts that I need to adjust for. So I've got accounts receivable and I can see uh, it's gone from 357 to, th uh, to 632. So that's increased. So that's opposite of click clan because click clan says if it's in a current asset decreasing, you add. So it's going to be a subtract. The difference is two, 275. So what about allowance for doubtful debts? Well, it's a contra asset. That means it's credit natured. So I need to do the opposite of what the assets rule is. So that means it's the liability rule. So let's have a look and I can see the balance has gone from 15 up to 31. So that's a current liability increasing. I'm going to add and that's going to be for 16. So inventories is next. I can see that it has decreased from 512 to 504. So when a current asset decreases, I'm going to add. So I'm going to add there and uh, that's for eight. So prepaid insurance is another current asset. I can see it's decreasing from 11 to nine. So once again, if it's decreasing, I'm going to add and that's going to be for two. So I'll be taking all these timing differences soon to my indirect method. 
Now I can do my current liabilities. So once again, I'll put my click cloud up here. I'm going to now be looking at the liabilities part uh, of click cloud. So let's have a look. We've got accounts payable. So accounts payable has gone from 377 down to decrease to 365. So it's opposite to click cloud because of current liability decreasing. So I'm going to subtract by 12. Wages payable has increased from 21 to 31. So it does follow click cloud. So I'm going to add and I'm going to put in 10. Then interest payable, it's gone from, so there's a dash, that just means zero. It's gone from zero up to 10. So it's increased as well. So I'm going to add for 10. So then I've got income tax payable. It was 137 and now it's decreased to 124. So it's the opposite of click clad. It's a decrease of 13. So they're all my time and differences. They're all done. I can take these now to my indirect method and I can pop in. So it's going to be minus the increase in account receivable 275 plus the increase in allowance for doubtful debts 16 and plus the decrease in inventories Eight. So now I need to get a bit more space. So then plus plus the decrease in prepaid insurance. Of two minus the decrease in accounts payable that was for 12 plus the increase in wages payable that was for 10 plus the increase in interest payable That's for 10 as well. Then minus the decrease in income tax payable. And that's 13, minus 13. So the sum of all the time differences, plus remember from the other page, Outflowed uh, two hundred and uh, sorry, negative two hundred and fifty four. So negative two hundred and fifty four. This will give me cash flows from operating. So I go back and it's the so two four two then minus um, 254 that's going to be so a negative outflow of overall of 12. So that's a full indirect method cash flows.